I'm Chelsea. Today I've got a neat project lined up. Catherine is a fellow DIYer and woodworker and like myself, her shed is where she creates most of her projects. It's a little plain on the outside and doesn't really reflect the fun, interesting thing she's building on the inside. But we're going to fix that today, starting with her door. It's not the prettiest door, but this one has kept Catherine's workshop secure for years. Structurally it's okay, but its age has really started to show. The veneer is warped due to weather and it's peeling off in several places. We can make a few repairs to fix this one, but instead we're going to start from scratch and build something a little more fun, a Dutch door. For this project we're going to need one 4x8 sheet of T111 siding, two 8-foot 2x4s, one 10-foot 2x4, at least six 8-foot 1x3s, two Homax Easy Gate kits, two door latch barrel bolts, one heavy duty lockable barrel bolt, a decorative door handle, a tape measure, a speed square, a drill driver, an eighth inch pilot bit, two inch exterior screws, a hammer, one and a quarter inch trim nails, or if you have access to one, a trim gun with compressor and one and a quarter inch trim nails, a four foot level, a circular saw, paint primer, and your choice of two different colored latex paints with a paintbrush. All right, Catherine, the first step is to deconstruct before we can reconstruct. So we'll just take the hinges off from this frame because we won't need these for the new one. All righty. You said the door was a good trooper. We actually <laughs> needed something when we decided to close it in. And uh, my neighbor just happened to have a door that was taken from hospital surplus equipment sale. <laughs> 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 so this as oftentimes with de de do-it-yourself projects, you need what's on hand. That's right. So you have a hospital door. <laughs> <laughs> it's assorted screws in case you haven't noticed that too. <laughs> you were very resourceful. That's what I'm learning. <laughs> with the old door down, we measure the width and height of the frame opening to determine the layout for the new door. Most old sheds like this one are not perfectly square, so it's important to be precise. After transferring the layout onto the siding, we cut it out. It'll be easier to paint it now before we put the little decorative trim on it. You do that half, I'll do this half. It'll be nice to have the Dutch style door so that you can still get some daylight in without having a window daylight and fresh air. And keep the dog out, Absolutely. Huh? That does butter like does like to get into things. I'm He's playful. Say, does he walk between your legs while you're trying to work and rubbing up against fresh paint? He usually paint likes and... to jump up and see what's up on the yeah. table. And Catherine stays busy in that workshop with a never-ending list of projects. One of the things is, you know, anytime you have a spare bedroom and the room is not large enough, so if you had a bed in it large enough for a couple if they were coming to visit that would take up the whole room right so i had just decided perhaps a murphy bed would oh, be wow. the solution and certainly be a challenge and uh <laughs> so you're looking for a challenge what the heck and there it is that's the story of that turned out pretty good nobody's complained about it that have, has slept there and visited well yeah there. you'd close them up in it if they did that's right <laughs> and you grew up in this house uh-huh I could have used a little bit of extra space in the kitchen uh -huh. for storage and everything. And Always. it was like this triangular space. So uh -huh. I just built a triangular cart and put wheels on it and so I can get to either side of it. Oh, nice. That turned out pretty nice, too. And then even in my culinary career, when you work in a pastry shop, it's still assembling ingredients and putting it together. I'd spend time with pastries and, well, you know, I could just have the hobby of woodworking and have something last a little bit longer. Yeah, then, I don't know. Certainly not as Those pastries fattening. last on my hips. <laughs> exactly, <laughs> that's what I was trying to avoid, too. We're also adding a finished coat of paint to the one by three trim pieces. You could paint everything in place later, but with so much to cut in, doing it this way is much easier. We're going with the hunter green to match the rest of the shed. All right, now that our paint's dry, we can put the frame together, and we're gonna do that on the back of the door. So let's go ahead and lay okay. this down. All face down righty. and we'll use some two by fours to make our frame just like you would a gate opening. Oh, okie dokie. We got 73 and a half. Since this Dutch door will be split in half evenly, we begin by measuring the long side and marking the cut line at the halfway point. 
All right, and just like that, we have a Dutch door. Awesome. <laughs> Next, we measure for the width of each frame. The door needs to fit nicely into the existing shed opening, so we're leaving enough clearance for it to close. These marks aren't for cutting, though. They represent where the 2x4 frame will attach to the door. With all of our frame marks and measurements ready, we're all set to start cutting some lumber. Lucky for us, Catherine has her own miter saw, so we're going to put it to work. Make it easier to see my little okay. mark. Right. Okay, I'll hold, hold that, that and you make the cut. We start off by cutting the horizontal pieces that will make up each frame. Right off the bat, we've got some pretty good teamwork. I can tell this project is going to go quick. Okay, this is what going to keep everything together. Cool. But since we have two doors, essentially, we need two kits. And basically, we're building it like a, a gate. So we have two of them with hinges and two of them without. Okay. So we can put our two by fours, slip right in here, mm -hmm. and we'll assemble them to the frame as we're assembling them into the door itself. All righty. So we'll attach these and then we'll get our measurement for the piece that we need to cut the two horizontal pieces that go there. Okay. So this needs to be flush with the bottom. Alrighty. Before screwing these two by fours and brackets together, we're pre-drilling each hole. This will prevent the wood from splitting. From here, we just piece this puzzle together. With our horizontal 2x4s in place and all four brackets attached, we measure for each vertical piece before cutting them to length. These boards just need a little persuasion to fit snugly into the braces. After attaching them to the brackets, we're ready to hang the first half. It's very sturdy. Ah, there's something missing. <laughs> and after repeating the same steps for the bottom door, we're ready to hang that one too. All right, let's see. Oh, awesome. Now I'll just put a little bit of trim on it and it'll really look great. Put a little lipstick on there. <laughs> so we're gonna start off with the outside of the door and work our way in. It's important not to leave any raw edges exposed to the outside elements. So after cutting each board, we cover the ends with a little paint. All right, let's nail her up. You good with that? I'm good with that. Okay. After nailing up the two side pieces, we measure and install the top piece to cap it off. Next, each half of the Dutch door will get trimmed out on all four sides, creating two square frames. All right, so we're just gonna use this scrap material to see where we want our angle little decorative pieces to go. That's a little too, not enough, a little bit further, that's too much. So let's just scoot it up just like that. I'm thinking that, I like that, but you know, maybe what we could use as a template is the speed square to do our measurements, and I think that would just be yeah. right on. All right, let's okay. see what it looks like. These accent pieces will really add some character to this door. Once we're happy with the measurement for our first one, we'll cut the same opposing 45 degree miter cuts for each piece, six in all. I just think that looks great. We're installing two pieces on the top door and four on the bottom to create a country cottage look. Amazing what a little architectural detail can do. Oh yeah. To an old worn out shed. For when Catherine wants to use it as a single door, we're adding two barrel bolts on the inside. And to keep the shed secure, we're adding a larger bolt for Catherine's padlock. After adding the handle, and a little touch-up, 
this Dutch door is complete. Well, Catherine, I think it looks like it's always been here. I love it. It is just so beautiful. I am so happy with the way it turned out. Butter will probably like it too. He's not going to be stuck inside when you're working out here. He's going to, he won't feel ignored. Chelsea, there is one more thing I'd like you to do for me before you go. What is it? I think you need to autograph the door for, <laughs> for historical which, purposes. Which half? <laughs> <laughs> the top half, of course. Okay. I have so many ideas for upcoming projects. Follow along on Facebook so you don't miss out.